everybody, this is Tikhun with JPM team and in this video we'll show you another JPM business application demo and in this demo we will build an interactive shell um, application. Not every business app needs a web UI or some fancy uh, UI to interact with your users and at sometimes a simple shell um, or terminal is enough and this is what we're going to build today um, in this demo we use the spring shell um, module which has a lot of built-in stuff for us and we will expand that to build our own um, commands which interact with our business processes um, you can download the source of the demo and instructions on how to run it yourself in our business applications module on github and i will link um, that in the description as well so let's get started so what i've done is i've cloned this repository locally and i will go to my service module and i will use as usual the launch script launch sh clean install um, to go ahead and start my business application um, so this will build our KJAR and our uh, different modules and uh, then start the app. I'm just going to wait for it to start for a second. All right, so as, as you can see, um, our uh, application has started and we can see our uh, prompt. Um, so this is, we're not going to interact with this application via web browser, you know, stuff like that. We, we have a terminal here and um, Spring Shell comes with a bunch of uh, helpful commands. One of them is help. And uh, here you can see the built-in commands, such as the clear one that I just used, exit to exit your application, um, history, um, script if you want to run multiple uh, commands at once, and stack trace. Also, it shows you once you start defining your own commands in your business application, and we'll see how that's done. Um, it will show all those commands, their name, and their description. Um, so let's get started. By default, when your business application starts, um, the sample shell KJAR module will be deployed. This already includes a couple of business processes. So let's take a look what those are. And we can use the process devs um, command. And this will print us process definitions. So we'll see we have currently two of them um, with their ID, the name, first test process, second test process, their version, um, and their deployment ID. This is the deployment ID of your module sample shell KJAR um, in your application. Now, we can see that currently we have no process instances running. So let's go ahead and start one of these processes. So what we do is, I can say start process, copy the ID, for example, for the first test process and give it the deployment ID. This will start the uh, first process. You can see this line here comes uh, from a script task of this demo process and it says started process with ID, comma, space, simple first test process and our process instance ID is one. Uh, now, if we look at our process instances, we can see that we have one process instance running. Um, so, so far, so good. Now, one of the things I wanted to show here, one of the commands in help is um, our deploy. So, your demo application comes also with a module called sample shell second jar. And this is not automatically deployed by default. So what we can do is use deploy command. And what this takes is our group ID, which is 
from company, then the artifact ID and the version. So once we enter this, this particular KJAR should be deployed uh, to our application. All right, so we say deployed. Um, this KJAR includes also two demo processes. So if we again try to look at our process devs, now we see we have four. Um, they're not in a real order, but we see the first and second have the deployment of the sample shell KJAR, and the third and the fourth, which we just deployed now earlier, have our sample shell second KJAR command. Um, so if we look at process instance, we have one. So now let's go ahead and start a process from our uh, second KJAR. So we can do the start process. And you see we have auto autocomplete as well. Um, so let's start our fourth one. So we give it the ID. And we give it the deployment ID here. So it says, I am uh, sure it's fourth, but let's see our process instances. We have two now, which is the fourth test process and the first test process, for which we start. Um, so now let's take a look at uh, the code for uh, for a second. Um, in your sample shell service module, we have, first of all, as you can see, the prompt. Uh, by default, uh, this is, you can configure the prompt yourself. In this case, we have um, a prompt provider, which simply prints out our server name. This comes from our application of properties, um, our key server server name. So we can provide our own prompt to our business users as we see fit. Uh, we also have in the commands uh, package our four commands. So let's take a look at, for example, one of them, uh, the start process command. Um, even though you're not in a web environment, you can still utilize um, all the configurations and all the available beans that are available for your business application. So we can easily just, we would do before auto wire process service and in here we can just say process service start process passing in the deployment ID and our process ID to start our process and then uh, get the process instance ID out of it. Um, same thing here. Um, we auto wire our runtime data service to ask it to get all of our process instances available. Um, you can have the entire API available to you to play and create your own commands and stuff like that. Um, one of the things to note, note here that I wanted to mention at the end is um, this also application shows you how to use Timeleaf 3. By default, if you um, create your Spring uh, business application um, and you add the um, Spring Boot Starter Timeleaf, you will be forced to use Timeleaf 2, which does not include um, text templates. Um, this application, just adding these two lines in your properties, your palm, and your properties will allow you to use Timeleaf 3, the latest stuff, and be able to create um, your templates and text, which we use here. Uh, these templates allow us to get the results of your commands, such as this. For, for this, we use the process instance template, which you see it's a text-based template. And you have the whole power of Timely for, for example, the, for each and uh, stuff like that. And to use substitutions and everything. So that's pretty much it for this demo. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll be back with soon with some more demos in the future. Thanks.